Hello, hello, Studio 108 community. I'm so glad that you're clicking in to join us today. I'm sitting with JJ DiGeronimo, and <laughs> I'm super excited to have her here in an off the yoga mat kind of conversation. So um, JJ is a local mom, entrepreneur, leader, light worker, and um, she's here to talk, I don't know about life, but really um, her book, is it's called Seeking 74 Key Findings to Raise Your Energy, Sidestep Your Self-Doubts, and Align with Your Life's Work. And I took a cruise through it, and I was so excited. I'm like, sit down with me. So today's the day, you guys, and here you are with us. Oh, I'm so happy to be here, and I can't believe like I'm at this point in my life where I'm actually going to talk about energy freely. Right? We're out of the closet. <laughs> Light workers, here we are. Here we are. We get to talk about frequency and vibes and intentions and manifestations and materializations and um, yes, and whispers. Like I love that that you said. Um, I want to get it right. Follow the whispers. Like we get to really talk to people and um, support each other in our inner whispers. Yes. Yeah, the whispers are important, and it's not something that I would have recognized had I not done some, some sort of mindfulness training years ago, because uh -huh. I was always focused on the past, what I've already completed, how I should have done it better, what changes I could have made, or the future of like, okay, what do I have to get done now? Right. And so I was so rarely in the present moment. Right. I have a feeling that we're a lot alike, mm -hmm. that we're wired kind of alike. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so tell us a little bit about your life journey and um, how that has shifted into this heartfelt mission that you hold. Yeah, I mean, looking back now, I'm turning 50 this weekend, so that's a big yeah, milestone. Birthday, you know, where we in God. Thank you, and for anyone who does birth charts, Ch uh, Chiron, you know, and you come full circle, and Chiron in your birth chart is sort of a, something that's hard for you to get around, sometimes you don't want to do it because you're embarrassed or in a past life, it was a big challenge for you that you don't want to like tap back into that energy, yeah, it's, it's a wound, scary. Chiron's a wound, yeah, yeah, and so you don't want to do that again, because it did not feel good the first time, and so when you get close to 50, you start to kind of step out in a new way, and I feel like this book for me is really about what I'm here to talk about on the planet. All that other stuff I've done to date is very meaningful and really helped prepare me for this moment. Love that. So the previous stuff is more under the category of business. It is because I've spent two years in corporate or two years, two decades in corporate America. And once I said yes to a lot of things like, yes, I'll have kids. Yes, I'll marry you. Yes, you know, we can basically move to the suburbs. And I'm still going after my career at the same pace, recognizing that something had to give. Yeah. And one, once I had two toddlers and I was trying to do my career, I just realized how incredibly difficult it is for women to do anything once they have children. Mm -hmm. And because you give so much of yourself to children and you want them to be so successful, but it starts at such an early age where it's like every little thing you're touching and it takes so much away from what your goals are and what you had hoped to do that you have to figure out another way to live. And I feel like a lot of us get lost in our yeses. Yeah. Um, the chapter that I tagged, because she was like, oh, you really studied the book. I said, well, I tagged a couple chapters and seemed to scream my name. Um, and the first one that screamed my name was overcommitted, but yearning for more. And that, like, gave me, like, um, God chills. Like, oh, I see you, JJ. Like, when you describe your experience around that, it's like a mirror to me of my experience like being a single mom and working full time and not just wanting to do it but really really wanting to do it well and um and having all of those responsibilities and structures but still having so many ideas of what else i wanted to do mm -hmm. and a lot. yes and i think for people that are here for a big purpose like you get inflections or insights of things that may be coming a decade later Gotcha. But, yeah. and you're it's always time, yeah. working to get there, but you're not even sure where there is. And then you're in the moment you're in with all these responsibilities. And I think for many of us, there's like this yearning for more, but we're not really sure what that more is. And we don't know why it hasn't yet manifested. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But our soul knows. Our soul knows. Our soul knows. Mm -hmm. there's, there's an urge in that. Yeah. Like the little inner whisper, the inner nudges. 
Like that's something really to take the time to tap into. And timing matters. I mean, there's times when you've said so many yeses that you can't get out of your schedule to be in the present moment. Or when you try to be in the present moment, you're just inundated with just so many thoughts that it's really hard to sort of step on the side of that and, and sort of encapsulate kind of what you're trying to create or build because you're so many, you're in your yes so much, the energy of all your yeses have you almost in a standstill. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't make space. Yes, it's like you create, mm -hmm. and, and we talk about, yes, there's just so many things you can be doing, and I think right now for many of us, especially with everything that's happened in the last three years, we have to decide what we want to run towards and what we want to leave behind. It's almost like um, being on this lifelong pilgrimage across the plains. Remember, like, I always was so enthralled with the stories of the pioneers and, like, how they would leave things the wagon load, you know, when they yeah. have to decide what heavy stuff gets left behind. But it's like in life, that's sort of the image I get is that we can't, you can't keep dragging the heavy things along because it's going to impede no. the purposeful forward flow. And during my first book, The Working Woman's GPS, I interviewed a woman by the name of Cassie, and she said, you know, you really need to align your energy, align your guesses. And I, even though I had read the power of now and I just still didn't know what that meant yeah. because I just I, I I'm so tactical and like math minded I need charts for everything mm -hmm. and so I created a chart that I now call the power of no the power of no that is like what is the commitment who's asking me to do it does it align to where I am or where I want to go and does it give me the right energy because there were things I wanted can you to say do. those again yeah and again yes. you know people are like well, 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 well. So the first is the commitment itself. What is the commitment that's being asked of you? Who's asking you? Because sometimes it's a boss. It could be a spouse. It could be a sibling, a parent. You could be asking yourself. It could be your neighbor. You would definitely have over-askers in your life. So it's good to kind of categorize who those are. But then does it align to where you are right now in your life or where you want to go next in your life? That's just a yes, no. Mm -hmm. And then how much, and does it give you the right energy? This is the next one. Does it give you the right energy? Yes or no? And then I do have another column, like, how much time does it take? Because something that takes 20 hours is a lot different than something that takes two hours. And I'm super mindful of what I say yes to now. Mm -hmm. And is it coming in the right package? Because there's a lot of things I want to do, but oftentimes they come in such a big package, like 20, 25, 30 hours. I don't have the time for that in some cases. So what can I do for them for three hours? Gotcha. And yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah. And so I think being really mindful of what you say yes to and making sure that you're being honest with yourself, because honestly, nobody really wants you to show up to the commitments that you're not interested and that don't align to where you're going, uh, because you usually don't bring the right energy anyways. Yeah, it doesn't help anybody. No, but it's, it's hard for people to learn to say no or give suggestions of other people that might be a better fit for that ask. I do feel like there's um, a change in the culture like a change in the cultural norms mm. where it used to be much, much less acceptable to make these choices. And now we do have some space and it could be that you're the only one who's aware that things have changed and the people around you aren't as aware of that change mm. and that everybody else around you could still be living in the old paradigm under the old systems, the old rules. But in fact, there's support. Here's me and JJ right here. There's support for you. Um, there are people that really appreciate the um, like the value of personal energy and investment and the beauty that happens, the synergy that happens, the alignment that happens when things are in flow mm. and that appreciate, no. Like, is this an alignment for you? If it's not, I really want you to tell me because it is. If it's not an alignment for you, it's not going to be helpful to my project either. So like learning to see each other that way and to give each other grace around that is for the leaders right now. You know, it is. And you have to do things on a daily weekly basis that allow you to step into that energy. And for me, I mean, I come here. I, I go to all, a lot of classes here. Kundalini is my favorite. But if you don't give yourself space to practice how good it feels to be in your own flow, it's hard to be out in the world and trying to be in your flow because you don't have a reference or an experience of how that feels on an off, 
like often enough. And so when you get out in the world, things come at you so fast that if you don't know how that energy feels, it's easy to let your energy go in the wrong direction. 100%. And I think that even like home practice versus finding a sacred place, which could be here, could be another studio, or you could have another activity that you do that you have sacred space for. But it's like, when we're in our home setting, there is a pattern in an imprint yeah. of us there. And it is difficult to break that pattern or imprint. I have to leave, even though you go for virtual. Like, I have to get out of my well, space me too. and get somewhere that I can just have space for myself. And if the dog is there, like, that's not my own space anymore. You know what right. I mean? You have to have but your the laundry. Space. The right. laundry holds a pattern for us. You know, the fact that there yeah. is a phone and it may or may not ring. Like, all of those things are a part of that. So, I mean, I think that you make a good point um, about the stepping out mm -hmm. in order to fortify and nourish and to learn skill set. Because yeah, it does. it's hard to change patterns. It's hard yeah. to change patterns. It's hard to let go, uh, put things in the way and you're not taking with you and move mm -hmm. forward. It can be very emotional. And you have to believe in yourself and where you're going enough to believe that you can do it. Yeah. And I don't know, I feel like one of our hottest commodities as a studio, and this would be for any studio or any community, is community, like the connection of people. And the offerings, I think that you have to go somewhere that can meet you where you're at. And not everybody wants to do downward dogs. So, yeah. You know, they want to just, some people just want to sit and chant or your mindfulness classes. And I think for many people, you've got to find like what it is for you. And it could be just walking around your backyard. If you don't have the right. means or you don't have the time or going to lunch by yourself or trying to go to a park. I mean, whatever you can do to create space for yourself is honestly one of the biggest gifts you can give yourself. Then you'll hear the inner whispers. Yes. And when you do that time to be by yourself, don't be making your grocery list, right? Don't be planning the next thing you have to do. Like just be present and pick out 20 things. I always force myself to pick out 20 things that you actually see. Yes, yeah, it's a mindfulness. All thing. senses. All senses. So see, hear, smell, you know, even taste. Sometimes you can taste the air. Like, mm -hmm. and I think when you have, you can usually get seven to 10 pretty easy. It's that extra 10 and you really have to be present. And it's just practicing being in the moment. And oftentimes when I'm practicing being in the moment, then I can really sense sometimes the whispers that come through. 100%. Love that. The key that went with the key, um, phrase that went with overcommitted but yearning for more is seeking is a great place to start mm -hmm. and I thought that really um, gives people an idea of what your book is like because it's sort of like um, a walk along yeah you guys it's like you read a little um, a little bit and then there are a couple questions to answer a couple lines to kind of journal right in in the text there and then another little paragraph idea and some lines to answer so it's really interactive and um it's a really it's a really i was like how practical is this like how really helpful and useful is this and a huge resource so um i admitted i didn't go from front to back but it would be a really great book to say look i'm going to make a six-week commitment I'm going to go chapter by chapter, day by day, and I'm going to fill out all of these. I kind of bounced around and picked things that caught my eye, but definitely um, that overcommitted, but yearning for more. And that's born out of your experience. So tell us a little bit more about this, because I'd like to really have people see clearly the story of you leaving corporate America to do this. Like, is there something to like a little story that kind of bubbles uh, up? This is when I knew, or this is when it shifted, or maybe even, you know, there's a story about, you know, talking to your boss. <laughs> yeah, so about. a decade ago, and that's how long it takes. I mean, it was a decade ago. It's not, nothing's a big shift. Most of the things I did were off the side of my desk. But a decade ago, for my 40th birthday, I was just so unsettled. I was moving through the career path that I thought made sense for me and that I had set forth for myself. But I just wasn't feeling it. I just, the accolades that came my way, the opportunities, I enjoyed them. But I still had this yearning for more and I could not explain it. And so as I was working on PowerPoints after my kids would go to sleep, you know, I'd start myself looking for retreats, things off the side of my desk somewhere. I could start to feel more from the inside out. And it was just something that 
just kind of took on its own path. And I ended up going on a personal solo trip to Sedona with Soul Adventures. And they, of course, wanted me to go for five days. I'm like, I can do two. <laughs> it's like this. It's like, I'm going to take my big solo trip. Yes. And like, isn't it even funny now to look back 10 years and to realize you only would give it two days. Now you're going to give it Oh, 10 days. Right now, I'm in. But like, yeah, the baby steps. That's my point. It's like you did the two days because that's what you could do. Okay, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. And I was like, I was nervous to ask my husband at the time because it was, you know, even though I was making my own money and everything, I just felt like it was selfish of me to go on a trip by myself. So that was a hard ask, mostly because I just didn't want him to feel like I didn't want him included. But I really knew I had to do it by myself. Like, I just knew there was something I had to figure out for myself. And, um, and then once I got kind of got through that hurdle, I had to go to work and ask for time off, which I had plenty of vacation days, but it's like, I knew I was shifting deep down. And I, by asking for the time off, I felt like it was me like going to explore my next path in life, even though I wasn't there at all, but I just knew at my soul level that I was going to be shifting. This was a turning point. Taking action on this was going to start heading you in a different direction. Yes, and I, I and it took me a couple of years to leave my day job even after that. And now it's like a whole decade later before I'm actually putting this journey down into words. So if I had to look back, I in fact I remember being in Miami, Florida, and I was at the standard. I don't know if you've ever gone to those, but they're really cool hotels to go to. But I went and saw an astrologer there. And I remember her saying in 2017, she's like, So in 2023, this is all gonna come together. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> Are you real? Yeah. yeah. Like six years from now, I'm exhausted. I can't believe I'm going to do this. But here we are in 2023. I would have, and that book wasn't even a vision then. Right. It wasn't even a vision. And that book has been turned down by seven publishers. Really? Yes. The book has been turned down time and time again. And it's like, I just, I knew I needed to get out there. And now that the book is done, I know why. Because I would have not been able to lay the book out the way I did. I would not have taken the same approach of the really small chapters and key lessons peppered throughout. Mm -hmm. And I sure as heck wouldn't have gotten approval on the cover. So I feel like mm -hmm. it came through me and it was going to come through me in a way that you it was have an amethyst on the cover. That's really lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think this cover is good, but clearly I'm not. So there's just so many things that have happened that I honestly now have so much more faith in like, it is going to unfold the way it is going to unfold, whether we like it or not. And if we are just keep pushing it away, it may take longer. You might have to go through more intense lessons or more tarot, uh, what is it called, power cards. Yeah. But it's coming. Yeah. And I feel like what you're actually saying is like, hey, hey, everybody, remember the process is a part of what you're creating yeah and that is it's book. not just yeah. the product it's not like just the book is what you're creating the book is the process like, i've gone the through. whole process that you went through was the book like the all of yes. it so whether for you it's the book or the job or the um you know mm -hmm. yoga teachers what i work with people want to be yoga teachers but like whatever it is your dream kind of destination the process the process the process yeah, and it's hard. The process is hard because a lot of it is about sidestepping your stories. And for many of us, our stories define not only our feelings, but our actions. And you really need to dive into those stories because those are often what is holding you back from stepping in. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the stories that are tied to the beliefs, that are tied to the subconscious patterns. Yeah, and if you don't know what I mean by stories, <laughs> it's something that you definitely should explore. I mean, one of the one of the books I read, well, I attended a mindfulness class, which a lot of times they have at your local hospitals. They have one here at UH, uh, and they have John Kabat's in classes that talk about mindfulness, but I read Rising Strong by Brene Brown, right. and she talks a lot about the stories, and it gives you a really good glimpse on how stories change your mood, change your action, change your path. JJ, I used to read like so, 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 so much and I read fiction all the time. And um, 
it's been a lot of years, but like as we came through the 90s into 2001, 2002, 2003, I had like this insight in those years that when I read fiction, I take myself on the ride of that character. Mm -hmm. So I'm living their story. So I'm living the adrenaline and the grief and the mm -hmm. anger and the injustice. So like my whole psyche system is tangled up in something that's not even mine. And like all the bad, like enjoy your fiction, whatever. But for me, I found so much more of myself when I stopped riding other people's roller coasters. You know, so for me to get out of my own story, I had to like stop with the stories. Oh, yeah. And then I had to stop with, like I start noticing like my stories. My friends used to say to me, um, you should write a book. And I was like, who wants to read this story? It's not a good story. It's <laughs> <laughs> a ridiculous story. Absolutely absurd. And then it occurred to me, it's a ridiculous story because I keep telling it, you know? And it's like to stop telling your stories, just to like zip it, to see like, what are my stories? And why am I so enthralled and such a sucker for other people's stories that, that it's all like yeah. in the opposite direction of that anchored mindfulness presence that I really wanted to be. So it's been, it's interesting. Stories are interesting. They are. Many, many They're super stories. interesting. I had a huge, and I still really work through it, but I do, I have a lot of money stories. You yeah. know, I grew up without money. I have a lot of money stories. And so, and even if you're, even if you end up like becoming a spear with money, that doesn't mean your money stories go away and you it still have to do yeah. the work. And so I have many chapters on money because I feel like money is one of the things that holds women back. So now we do retreats, which we're doing one here in a couple of weeks, but a lot of women will say, well, I don't have the money or I don't want to spend, or I just don't want to ask for the money or I don't want to spend the money. And I always say, you know, it's, that's just a tool. Money is a tool. And it's really about you saying yes to you. So whether it takes money or not, I feel like a lot of women have conditioned themselves that they can only do these few things. And oftentimes it doesn't give them the opportunity to spread their wings. 100%. 100%. You can probably see that with um, yoga training, right? 100%. Mm -hmm. been, and yeah. it's often too. And I see it in yoga training. Sure, sure, sure. But that's the easy thing, you know, yeah. like to see it in other people. I see it with me. Mm -hmm. Like I see it with me big time. It's like, I do have the money, but am I going to value that? And so then it's like, oh, well, I do have the money and I bought this other thing that I really don't value as much. Mm. So why am I confused about spending on this, which I do value much more. It's like to start to like, look at the money as an expression of myself yeah, and absolutely. my values and my interests and where, where I'm going and what I'm investing in of myself. So yeah, it's real money is really, really impactful. It's it, life changing. And it really is interesting with women. Because and receiving see, money as well. Yeah, receiving, giving is a big mm -hmm. thing. Investing in not just investing in sex, but investing in yourself. I think the frequency that you give money and how you use money to expand the impact you want to make in this life is yeah. something that I have spent a lot of time diving into years. Yeah. And so I have three chapters on money and three chapters on mothers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Equally. And I love my mother's hot spots. When I talk to a lot of women, mothers are a huge piece of their stories. 100%. Mm -hmm. And also, like, the way times change in mm -hmm. motherhood mm -hmm. lays a lot of expectations on us. Hot spots. You hit the hot spots, girl. You mm -hmm. said retreat, so I want to talk about retreat. Uh, we're, we're, we're planning a retreat, me and JJ. <laughs> and um, I haven't been out here, but JJ um, has a home community and work going on at Unvermillion. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, first, I want to tell you that this came to me as a whisper. <laughs> uh, I've been trying to take time off through the holidays and through January. And so I really didn't have any attention to do any gatherings. But I got the date and the person that was Tracy. And <laughs> I had never even talked to her about it. I've never even shared the property or whatever. But I was reassured that she was the person. And this is the date. And when I first asked you, you were like, well, let me get more. I know. Like, I, because you said vermilion, and I'm like, I couldn't go up to that lake in the freezing cold. But I, you have a very warm, lovely yes. spot for us. It's going to be the perfect time. So we are February 5th, you guys. If you're taking notes, jot that down. But go ahead. Tell yeah, us. February 5th. It's in, it's just, uh, it's in a, 
it's in a, it's in a state on the lake. So you have views of the lake and there's tons of bald eagles and four fireplaces. And we have one of the best chefs in the area up there going to be joining us, Chef Dina. So she'll be joining us. And it's really going to be a day for us to come together in community and connect in a way that allows you to sort of let go of sort of what's behind and create space for what's ahead. And we're going to do a basu. Yes, we're going to make gemstone basus. So you'll have this little, um, we're making them strung on a little hook so that you'll be able to use it as an adornment in your home. There are some pictures on the website. So um, you can find that on um, on my website, on JJ's website, you'll find links um, from me to her social media. Um, and below this podcast um, YouTube video, you'll find some links. But um, we're going to have a little bit of movement and breath because we practice. Mm -hmm. um, I'll bring the gong up so you'll have a really nice um, sound vibrational cleansing and clearing. But this is what we're talking about when it comes to like creating sacred spaces and times for reflection um, so that you can have um, like an opportunity to sit with yourself and target and listen and align for next steps, um, honor, close out, last steps, you know, kind of wherever you are in that creative life cycle, but, you know, to listen to the whisper. And there's never going to be a time, like, there's never going to be a time you have nothing else to do. That's the thing. There's always things you're going to leave behind. But at times, there's times in your life where you have to prioritize yourself. And it's 12 yeah. to 4 p.m. on a Sunday, yeah. which, of course, there's basketball games and other things going on in your life, family commitments. But they're always going to be there. I mean, that's the reality. They and, are. you know, you don't have to go all the way to Sedona. You can just join us for four hours and um, a million. Oh, it's good. It's going to be lovely. And I sure. think for many of us, it's just saying yes to ourselves to just see what it's going to be about. And you might not know anybody, but we're going to be there. And honestly, it's really about the excitement of how the universe brings these specific people together. Yeah. And I'm um, finding more and more, you know, I moved my whole um, teaching community from Fairlawn, Akron, up here to independence and I had lived in Brexville and was driving down and created a community down there for nine years but after COVID just wanted to be closer to home and wanted to serve my own community and you guys I have been like crazy thrilled blessed out like surprised um, <laughs> just honored by the people that walk through the door and the and the just the lovely lovely people that are really stepping forward to build community here and to be leaders here and to um, but to connect with everyone. So when you walk into this space, to JJ space on, on February 5th, you're going to just be really welcomed and you're going to meet new people that help you feel like, oh, other people are on this path with me. Other people took time on a Sunday away from their families to come up here and to honor themselves and to, and to create sacred. And your Vastu um, home adornment, we're going to infuse that with your intention so that when you take that home, you'll have an energetic representation of that day that you can hang in your home and not to be underestimated this is how this is how change happens this is how you get a little crack in the sidewalk and that first little sprout comes through this is how you get a peek in the wall where you can start to like open yourself up for a window or a door into something so I'm super excited about it can you tell I mean I can tell and I believe me it is all that more the space is amazing it one day soon it's going to have condos and and some um townhomes and we'll have you know spa there eventually but you'll get to see it all before that happens and that's right now it's just absolutely unbelievable and yeah i haven't um, been there yet you guys but the pictures are gorgeous yeah it's it really like something we're seeing everyone who comes there is like i can't believe this is in ohio yeah so i'm excited to have this date i'm What's so honored from Brexville independence about an hour maybe yeah 15 minutes usually. 50 minutes yeah like 15 minutes an hour. Okay. An hour. and it's it's really pretty and the space and the bald eagles i mean i just am in love with it and do they love the gongs and the bowls out the animals come out in droves when we play them there and you know it's like an ancient i don't it's know what site. it's a site you'll feel it the minute you get there so we hope you'll join us to say yes to you that's how i feel yeah say yes to you for sure for mm -hmm. sure it's a baby size bite it is baby it is size. that's all I'm, like like you're so good at this okay okay okay, okay. Um, JJ is very good at this, and she has a little exercise for clearing mental clutter mm -hmm. and grounding you. Yes. It's short, and um, I think it's 
simple enough that you can either play the little portion of the podcast again and again, or just do it a couple times yeah. and call and bring it into as your own. So I'm going to set up so you can lead us. Through. Okay. Well, first, so I'm at my desk all the time. I love to work and I love to just, I just love working. So, but I am at my desk a lot and sometimes my mind just never turns off. And sometimes I really need to work from my heart. And I really try to work from my heart as often as I can. But when you get to numbers and emails, like it's so easy to go right back up to your head. So at my desk, a lot of times I will put my feet out. They're usually on a little, uh, little thing on the floor, but I usually just kind of feel my feet on the ground. And if I want to get in the moment, like right away, like if I can feel myself getting fired up or I just feel like I'm not really being present, I just like touch my toes up and down on the ground. And I just feel that energy like move up my legs, into my stomach, up my chest and shoulders, and then up to my head. And like that, this really quick thing you can do to just get in the present moment. Now, if you're looking for something a little bit more and you're just feeling like, oh gosh, I just don't know how I feel about this situation or I'm not really sure what to do. The first thing that I do is I try to take the problem out of my head and bring it into my heart. And so I physically take my fingers and touch the center of my head where some people would say the third eye is. And I sort of lasso the thought. So if I'm concerned about, you know, something I did or a way someone has responded or should I do this event or should I, you know, take on this project, whatever it is, you just lasso the thought. You physically just like see yourself lassoing the thought. And then I just drag my fingers down my nose, dropping down into my lips. Make sure your thought is still with you over my chin. And I like to drag it down my throat because I'm like, I'm not ready to talk yet. I need to keep just thinking about this idea that I'm pulling down through my head all the way down until my fingers touch my heart. Now, sometimes that thought does not want to leave your head. So sometimes it gets stuck up in your nose or in the back of your throat. And so you just visually push it down. If you need a little help, sometimes I Think of my head, just the top of my head, opening up a little bit and letting the white light shine through. And that usually pushes it down into my heart. And I just let it sit there for a moment. Sometimes I have to visually like take my fingers and pull it down because it's stubborn. Because my ego works out of my head and my ego always wants to like give me the answer. Generally it's fear-based or worry-based or I'm trying to avoid something. So I really want to get more love and acceptance. So I pull it down into my heart. Take a deep breath, sometimes usually two or three, to just make sure it's all down there. And then I say, how do I feel about this? Is this something I want to run towards? Is this a good use of my time? Does it align to where I am or where I want to go? And does it give me the right energy? And generally my hair, my head feels very free and I can feel the sensation in my heart. It's either a yes or a no. And if it doesn't come to you right away, you can ask later. One of the greatest gifts I've given myself is not to respond right away to things that I'm not sure about. Give myself 24 hours, because sometimes if I don't get the right away the answer, I will wake up with the answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'd rather, oh, I'm like an Aries, so yeah. I'm like fire kind of quick, but um, I've been trying to practice that too, because I would rather be really certain and the sleeping overnight seems to help me too. Oh, I get amazing ideas when I wake yeah. up in the morning. It just seems so clear. And yeah. honestly, it really clears my head out a lot of times. And I get, I avoid so much internal chatter and frustration chatter. Like, right, 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 right. So that just helps me. I just love this lasso idea of pulling energy it out. Felt really good. Yeah, yeah, it felt really down regulating. And I like that idea of lassoing, kind of dragging it down, stuck in the nose. Did you like that part? That's cute, right? Yeah. I'm like, stop <laughs> there. It's like, I'm not coming. I'm not coming. Like, yes, you are coming down here. All the way down here. And anytime I feel like I can't move energy myself, I open up the top of my head and just let the white light, clear, brilliant white light, full of love and light, flush through me, even if I have to flush things into the ground. Yeah. Because that's so helpful. Yes. yes. That's, yes. What, that's what Earth is for. She's like, can I please like have that dense energy on a dense body? I want to I want to grow the grass with it. So yeah, yeah, super helpful. 
Thank you, JJ. Oh, thank you for inviting me. The book is called Speaking. Find it. It's such a great resource. So, so, so many helpful tips in there. And um, February 5th, we're going to be together. We'll on be together the lake in with the bowl. It's going to be amazing. Oh, my gosh. The place is just exquisite. I hope you join us. We'll see yeah, you there. For sure. Namaste. Namaste.